my tech journey, you're probably wondering, how does events and technology roll in together, right? So I want to let you know I started out in college, in nursing school, and then I hated it, so I went and worked in a morgue, then I worked in an AIDS clinic, then I worked in a psychology ward, and that took me to about a year. And I stayed in healthcare for about nine years, and did it full time, but I had this thing on the side, because my family owned a venue, my uncle had a venue on the Gulf Coast, and I knew how to plan and design and just did it for fun. And so that led to, I'm not Catholic, and I don't go to your church, but can you come plan my wedding at this church, and can, can, can you come plan my wedding here? Which then led to, can you come plan my wedding in Antigua, in Jamaica, not in Nashville? So people ask me, how do you do this? How do you travel all over the place? Obviously, I had to get a health care, thank God, um, and I launched my own business. And in May of 2010, our town flooded. This was I-24. This is not Photoshopped, you guys. This was real. If you're from Nashville, you remember this. We had eight displaced events that weekend, and I was really thinking, what industry am I in? What am I doing with my life? But I remember the last week Right before I graduated from college, my computer crashed. It got a virus. And you can't graduate without your clinical rotations and finishing your notebook. Your professors don't care. I went to UT. They're like, get it done or you don't graduate. I hated school. So what did I do? I took my tower. Do you all remember the big towers? You know, floppy drives. They're like, honey, you didn't back it up on a floppy drive? I'm like, no, uh, I didn't know what that was. That was the last time I was ever going to feel that empty because I lost everything. I thought I was going to have to check myself into the mental hospital that I actually worked in for depression. And then a week later, my car got broken into, and I'm not making this up, y'all. My purse was stolen. My planner, do y'all write everything down in your daytime planner? Like your life is so important when you're a senior in college. It's not. It's not important. I didn't know 15 years later I'd be managing millions and millions and millions of details and dollars. And so God was seeding me to be an entrepreneur. And so the tech journey that I've been on through technology, while it all started with healthcare, was when the government mandated EMR, electronic medical records. And I saw at a very young age, thankfully, how powerful being paperless and using productivity and using technology can actually make or break your business. So I want to share with you guys a couple things today, why I do what I do and how I'm able to do what I do. I can't do what I do without all these tech tools. And 90% of what I use is free. It's 100% free. All of these beautiful things that we do, the whole basis is technology. So the first thing that I want to talk about is why. Like, why now? I don't know if you guys are afraid of technology, but change is good, and why now? Because every year we get older, and you cannot buy time. You can't buy love, dreams, friends, health, happiness. You think you can for a hot second. And so what do you want to do with your life? What do you want to do with all the time that you have? So this is why I'm super passionate about being productive and profitable, and most importantly, paperless. So my simple steps you got to know the psychology of your client and what they're thinking before you implement technology. You've got to have great communication, education. You've got to have a process, share experience, and then lay the technology on them. So the first thing we do, we start with a simple web form. And then we do a personality test, which is called True Colors. This is how I know what my clients want. It's a little hokey test, but it's fun. And it really gets them to trust me because I completely customize the message based off the way my client needs to hear it. The second thing is communication. So I love this little photo. My computer doesn't work. The hard drive crashed. What do I do? And the guy's like, well, did you back up? And, you know, he's talking about a hard drive, time capsule, floppy drive, and he's like backing up. And he's like, why? Is it going to blow? You never know what your client's thinking on the other side of the phone if you can't see them and you don't know how their brain's wired. So we educate our clients based on technology and what we do. We use Hours Keeper. We use a calendar that's shared so all of our team members can see it. Freeconferencecall.com. Marco Polo has completely changed the way that we do things with video so that 
clients don't think that we mean something mean when we're really having fun. I use QuickTime on a daily basis to record my screen and send things out to our clients. We use FaceTime constantly. We save so much driving time. We have clients all around the world, email and WhatsApp. Those apps are the foundation of my communication to my business and my team. We educate people through pictures. Yeah, you can use Amazon and Dropbox and iPhoto. We use SmugMug. You can share it with the world. So audio and video is our number one seller. It's awesome because people call me like, I saw that video that you guys did and I want to hire you. So capturing people in the moment is super, super, super key to our success in capturing that. We, had a great we also out. educate with time lapses so that people can see behind the scenes that sometimes it takes 300 hands to set up an event when there's only 150 guests there. But the people don't understand that when they're paying the labor bill. So you've got to educate. You've got to have a process. We tell them when, when they come in, we use Google Drive. It's free. We use templates. It's free. We use Wonderlist. And we use reminders constantly. I'm constantly saying, Siri, remind me this. Siri, remind me that. Even though I have a full team, you want to delegate appropriately. And we use one password to make sure that all of their credit card information and data is completely safe. We also want to set the expectation and the experience for our clients because it's emotional money spending. You can't just call us up. You've got to schedule everything. We're planning an event here. We're planning for your life to start together. So set that expectation. And then we guide them through the experience. We really do pull back the drape and tell our clients why we do what we do, and we let them in on it. We're going to have everything in iCloud. It's a security blanket. I love your little notebook, but if it's stolen, then what? Your guest list is gone, right? All the contracts are online. Everything's in Dropbox. This is how I'm able to completely run a paperless company. Then you can go into technology and share. Think about what toolbox you have in your industry. So the six that have made the most difference for mine, I don't carry a notebook anymore. I can simply draw my iPad. I don't have a scanner in the office anymore. I'm not scanning in magazine pictures. I simply take a picture with Genius Scan. We don't really go to the store that much anymore. Everything's on Amazon Prime. And then point and measure is a tape measure, and then the leveling app, I don't have to go in tow down to the airport with a big old toolbox anymore because I've got these apps. And then touch draw is what we do all of our CADs on. So by using technology, guys, you can organize your business, your team, your clients, and your life. So many people seem to be afraid of taking the leap into technology. And yes, we use software every single day, spend thousands of dollars a month, but at the end of the day, making it easy for our clients matters. It can really alleviate a lot of stress too. Again, selling a security blanket when you're spending a ton of money emotionally is really, really important. And hopefully by going paperless and making just a few small changes in your business, you'll be excited again. You remember how you first felt your first day when you like opened your company? My brother did. <laughs> I'll leave you with two questions to think about. So young people say, time is money, time is money. And older sick people say, time is priceless. So how are you spending your time? So if you can use technology and get ahead a little bit, why not change? Why are you afraid? If you're not proactive, there's a shitstorm coming. Just warning you, don't be that guy. Don't be that guy. Thank you.